Today we'll be talking about my relationship with sexuality and intimacy while I paint some strawberries. So grab your craft of choice and let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel, my flowers. I'm your host from the Beyond Shavion podcast, Shavion. And I hope you all are subscribed if you have been enjoying the videos. If this is your first time, leave a like, comment, let me know your thoughts. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen the first episode of the official Beyond Shavion podcast, definitely check it out. Um, link will be in the description it'll be at the end of the video y'all just click on just click on the channel and go watch the video i feel like what i talked about in that episode really pairs well with the topics that we'll be talking about today but before we get into all of that be sure to watch the video to the very end because we'll be doing our first official ask shay segment where y'all sent in things that y'all are dealing with and i'll give my perspective on how i feel that you can best navigate it so stay tuned for that especially if you submitted something because i'll be answering it at the end of the video but yes today we're going to be talking about my journey with sexuality and intimacy and just how i've been able to create more confidence around expressing the two i've always had a weird relationship with those areas of my life because of things that i have gone through and just feeling like extremely disconnected from my body but over the past three years i've gone to therapy and just worked really hard on building that relationship with my body and myself and like just knowing my needs and desires and just not feeling shame in that you know so yeah as always definitely let me know if you can relate to the experience at all you know i make these videos for people who like are experiencing like the trauma side of things i want you to know that like that won't always be your reality and like you can pull yourself out of it like i wish i was able to see the different ways that i could pull myself out of it when i was in it so i want to provide that perspective but then also for people who are coming out of similar situations like i want you to know that you aren't alone in this and i love the quote by cleo soul she has said it in a song life will always bring its pressures use it wise and keep those treasures like that she hit. i really want to be someone who can not really give my treasures away but shed light on your own treasures that you have that you may not even notice are fucking gold so yeah i'm gonna try to not cry in this video y'all i'm really gonna try to not cry but yeah let's get into it <laughs> So of course y'all we have to start at the root of the cause and give childhood Shay some healing to her experience because yeah I definitely was not hugged as a child. Um, I didn't really have either one of my parents growing up and my caregiver was just always so preoccupied with my father that like I just never got loved <laughs> like I never receive like that parental um love and there just weren't very many examples of healthy love around me or even just love like i just don't feel like what i seen growing up was like love like you know what i'm saying i was used to kids like being called like bitches and sluts like you know what i'm saying just for being a child like you know how you have those little valentine day parties at school like my nana found a note from a from a dude that was like just saying that he likes me or whatever and i got shamed literally in front of my entire family for that and they would not let it down y'all like throughout my entire time in elementary school like they will always bring up that situation i'm just like oh my goodness and I mean, I just never was able to see healthy expressions of love and intimacy because intimacy doesn't have to be sexual. Um, and I feel like a lot of times in this society, intimacy is a byproduct of relationships instead of it being the foundation. And then to add another layer to that, and I'm sure y'all have heard me talk about it on my channel before, but I've had a lot of essay experiences growing up. And, you know, it really just affirmed to me that my body wasn't my own and that like sex is just this very transactional thing. And then society 
only fucking confirms that with the media and like what's just glorified in the music industry and y'all know what i'm talking about we need we don't even have to go literally i don't even have to go deep into that because like we just all already know and i think that's just so fucking ridiculous so pairing that like not getting intimacy in not getting that like intimacy or like love from anywhere but then also getting sexually abused and then also with the added layer of shaming for wanting to explore love and the different feelings that you have as a damn child which is completely normal just really warped my perspective to feel as though I need to sexualize myself in order to claim worth. Like, for the longest time, I associated being feminine with being sexual because, like, I thought that that's what that was. I thought this is how I'm supposed to show up as a woman. This is how I provide my value by providing this. <laughs> and it made it just such an odd thing for me because, like, I have so much trauma around sex it created such a challenge for me to even want to be sexual but like i would force myself to push past it because i'm like you know what i'm saying like this is this is how this is how i have to be sex is the best thing i have to offer so i need to ignore my traumas i need to ignore the fact that i'm not even enjoying this that i don't even care for sex for real like i need to ignore all of that because like this is the way that i'm going to be able to get a partner and i added like another extra layer to it because then i'm like that's not all i have to offer like you know what i'm saying i'm not just beauty i'm brains i'm i'm everything you know so then i'm like i can bring x y and z to the table and then i start to overcompensate with how well i can treat my partner i was dating this dude one time and like i mean the sex was good you know what i'm saying but like i didn't want to just leave it at that you know what i'm saying like i'm like i got more to offer you know what I'm saying? i got i bring more to the table so like i'm driving this dude to, to work every day every single day i'm driving him back and forth to work i'm like being overly understanding of his traumas and the fact that like even though he triggers me like i understand that like he's just triggered and i can handle those triggers because i want my partner to know how much i can handle like my resilience like there's value in my resilience and how well i can take care of you y'all without the ring without the ring like <laughs> no it's not okay like it's not okay like oh my goodness like so it's been like a slow awakening to my ways of being like i feel like i just thought that like i was someone who liked to take care of people you know what i'm saying i just I mean, like, I am a nurturing person, but there's, like, a difference between being nurturing and overcompensating to prove a point, overcompensating to keep people in your life, you know? Um, and I don't know, I feel like it just really ruined my relationship with intimacy because, like, things just have always felt so transactional to me. I never felt like the intimacy that I was looking for and craving was real i felt like okay maybe i am just like looking at movies and i'm just you know what i'm saying like too far in the clouds you know what i'm saying i'm just a romantic um just a hopeless romantic and there ain't no hope for this on this planet like that's how i was thinking and that just really heightened my very consuming intimacy fears like my childhood definitely caused me to uh, develop a fearful avoidant attachment style um and if you don't know about attachment style i'm not going to talk about that in this video but definitely look it up on google there are a lot of different tests that you can take um and they give you explanations about what it is but yeah pretty much like i just crave intimacy and closeness with people but I'm so afraid of like losing it or feeling unworthy of it that I completely push people away. And it really ties into the topic because like I associated closeness with someone demanding sex. It just made me feel afraid to be in, a re in relationships where sex wasn't present 
or to be in romantic partnerships when I had low libido or if I just wasn't in the mood like I will always feel very afraid of losing that person or that person no longer seeing me as worthy or like liking me um like very real calling (laughs) on the phone like do you still like me but it's because like we hadn't had sex in two days and I'm genuinely like afraid that like this person is now gonna hate me um and I don't know I feel like me having those dynamics within myself definitely made it difficult for the people around me to love me the way that they wanted to and that you know I was looking for but thankfully I'm learning to make love to myself like Shay, what do you need to feel fulfilled? What do you need to feel seen and turned on? Not just while you're having sex, but in life. Like, I want to feel... (sighs) (laughs) Like, what do I have to do for you, Shay, to feel good? How can I make you feel good? Like, really just simply asking yourself that. Like, how can I make you feel good? What do you need to feel good? And not even just in this moment, but throughout the day, when you're having a rough day, when you're not in the mood, like how can I get you in the mood? And I feel like the simple act of even just asking yourself those questions just like awakens something in itself. Like, you talking to me? You talking to me? (laughs) So I've just really been in a space where I am prioritizing learning my needs and desires um and not even just like what I need physically either but like I said like being able to turn yourself on even when you didn't had the shittiest day like being able to come to yourself and make you feel so loved that none of that shit even fucking mattered like being okay with feeling selfish and not even allowing shame into that space like if shame knock on the door be like I'm sorry, baby, but we, we're good. I'm, I know that I'm doing the right thing right now. I don't need you to come and check me in any type of way. So yeah, I've just really been prioritizing my pleasure more. And I definitely feel like it's something I'll be continuously learning and changing as I get to know myself more. And as I experience different things in life, like recently I've been talking to a woman, y'all, like, tight shit. I'm not gonna go to in, but like I don't know it's just been giving me such a new perspective on love and just I just never knew that like it can be as attentive as it is like with the prioritizing your pleasure thing it's not just about learning what your pussy likes like how to make yourself come but it's like how do I make myself feel fulfilled even after I have came in the next day? Like since starting to talk to her, I've just been feeling like a new perspective wash over me on like how to love myself and show up in my pleasure. Um, But yeah, what this has looked, but like practically what this has looked like for me is knowing that I fucking hate bad smells. Like genuinely y'all i hate bad smells so like i have a travel candle like if i'm going to somebody's house like if i'm going to a partner's house i'm gonna bring a candle with me like just in case it stinks or even at home like i'm always gonna have a candle or something that i can light and it's just instantly like just i'm like "Mm, like, yummy (laughs) or for me i love talking to my pussy after a nice shower oh my gosh and that's another thing taking a candle lit shower yeah like just taking care of myself in general like and it's not even like I need to do the most but like taking out the time to care for myself turns me on enough like I'm like oh you really fucking with me like you you really fucking with me <laughs> like and I'm just it's just myself you know what I'm saying so like talking to my yoni like after I get out of the shower like looking at her like touching her like how you been feeling babe like what you need like you know you need something you need huh? <laughs> but like that ass like really just that simple act just makes me feel so freaking good and alive and connected with myself in a way that I don't know I'll ever experience with someone else maybe I will but it's like it just really brings like a different type of connected connectedness um and yeah so like just really prioritizing my pleasure has really led me to finding confidence in how i express my love and sexuality like 
I mean, I didn't go into detail about all the different ways that I make love to myself because y'all, this is YouTube. <laughs> like, this is YouTube. I can't, I can't go in. But like, I feel like starting small with like making myself feel good has given me the confidence to take that to my partner and be like, you know, this is what I want. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to feel like so insecure about like dirty talk and stuff like that because I'm like, I don't know what to say, but like figuring out what I like now, I'm like, oh, well, I know what to say because I know what I want, you know, like little stuff like that. And I feel like just little stuff like that has just been making me feel more confident in my sexuality and even outside of sex like if I don't want to I feel more confident in expressing that I just don't want to or like I'm not ready for that and because I've created this dynamic of intimacy with myself I feel safe in that feeling already and that gives me confidence to feel that intimacy with other people as well i hope that makes sense and i also just want to add that like there's no right or wrong way to do this like as long as you feel seen and cared for that's really all that matters don't look for outside validation for your pleasure like figure out what you like and have fun in that all right y'all it's tea time it's tea time welcome to the first official ask shay segment where you all can send in questions about your situation and i give you my perspective on how you can best navigate it um the form will always be in the description if you want to submit a question and it doesn't even have to be like situational based like you can literally ask me questions about anything um and if there are too many and i can't answer them all in this video then i'll just make a separate video so yeah marie says what's up queen hey i'm a 15 year old girl and even though i'm still young i still understand the irritation and frustration about not knowing if i'm feminine enough about a half year ago i about a half a year ago i said to my parents that i like girls and i mean they took it nicely but i was still confused and sad about it i think that i am really bad at standing up for myself and my identity before I go out to parties, I never know what to wear. If I want to appear masculine or feminine, and I'm scared of taking that jump and going to dress. So I guess I'm asking how you, how do you come out of your comfort zone and your thoughts about it? By the way, I love your channel and your content. It's so relaxing to listen to and it's true. Thank you for that. I'm happy that you enjoy, Marie. I do just want to say, like, your age doesn't, like, declare how aware you can be of something. It's like, I know you're just like, I'm only 15, but it's like, I don't know. That's It's like, your, your experience is valid, is what I'm trying to say. I definitely understand just showing up as what people are used to seeing. But, like, you honestly have just got to, like, not care about other people's judgments like you have to get out of your head about being perceived I feel like that's probably what's stopping you at least when I'm in a headspace like this I'm afraid of how other people are perceiving me and processing it but it's like you don't have to be you don't have to be one way or another I feel like the most fun people are people who fucking confuse me a little bit or like not even confuse me but just like they're just authentically themselves and that can change by the day by the week by the year like you don't have to fit into a certain mode and as annoying as it may sound you really just have to do something scared like honestly you gotta do a lot of things scared like you're gonna have anxiety about things like preparing yourself like saying okay i know i'm gonna feel anxious about this but I have this little fidget toy or this little stress ball with me that I can squeeze to remind myself that like even though I have anxiety I can still survive this situation um and it's just gonna be like a con you're gonna have to gradually build your confidence with it like wearing whatever you want to wear like dressing mask for a day and just going to target like you don't have to go to a party the first time that you dress masculine but like go to target go to the store like just build confidence with yourself like okay i can show up as this person because i did it at the store the other day like even though my anxiety might be a little bit more prominent because i'm going to a party with my friends at least i have some type of 
um i don't know like you know just confidence in yourself like i know that i can survive and i know i know how i feel in these clothes i know how this look makes me feel um yeah i hope that makes sense but just building confidence in yourself by doing small things that take you closer to the expression that you want to express and that you want to be in um and also just not giving a fuck about other people's judgment because one it's, it's really a two-sided coin because most of the time nobody actually gives a fuck like everyone is so wrapped up in their own shit they like just nobody cares but then on the other coin you will have people that will judge you and that's just life like that judgment is not going to change who you are that judgment does not change all the things that you have had to go through and overcome and like the value that you give to people those judgments will never deplete your value and i think you just need to remember that like you're valuable as you are and you deserve to show up as you want to so yeah i'm wishing you luck um okay this is actually going to be the last one i do because like i didn't realize i would be giving these long responses y'all i'm such a yapper but what i'm gonna do is post a video maybe two days from now where i'm answering everyone else's so if you have a question that you want to submit definitely do that and i'll be answering it later this week i believe it's timmy okay timmy says hey love hey just wanted to start off by saying your words have provided me with so much strength i'm so grateful for the youtube algorithm sometimes my dilemma is mostly about love and relationships i'm 18 okay soon to go off to uni okay and unlike a lot of peers i have never been involved with another person romantically or sexually i know that comparison is a thief of joy and so oftentimes i throw myself into education to distract myself from this void it's not like i feel empty because i have hope that i will meet someone special someday but not right now as it seems like such a huge distraction i do find myself overcompensating though through schoolwork and deluding myself by saying that it's not compatible with my journey right now slash i don't need love of course this is not true everyone needs love and i can see how this could breed contempt of my friends who are in healthy relationships i'm still coming to terms with my own feelings as a gay black man and thus the added pressures of being queer and navigating sex and self-worth muddies the waters even more my question what uh, what would your advice be to anyone who is afraid of being in love or the idea of losing themselves in a relationship thanks so much today hope you have a beautiful day you're so sweet tv i love this question so much you're extremely aware and i just love that shit i'm so happy that you're one of my viewers like this is what i want to attract <laughs> But yeah, I feel like when it comes down to falling in love, it really takes a certain amount of acceptance. Like you have to accept the fact that you could possibly get hurt and that things won't work out the way that you want them to. But like, but doing it anyway, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what love like that's like that's like that's like one of the big things that is built on it's built on the fact that like bro you can literally rip my heart out of my chest and destroy me as a person but i love you enough to hold that pain of course not planning for it don't plan for it ever but like i don't know i feel like trying to run away from that fear will probably only make it bigger so i think in your situation just accepting that like it's gonna be a little scary but like i can get through this because one you're not going through it alone like you have a partner there with you and vocalizing like if you, or when you find your person like when you find your person and if you feel that fear coming up like letting them know like yo i'm terrified right now but i'm trusting you and making sure that they give you that reassurance that you know what i'm saying they probably just as scared as you are like yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's a joint thing it's a joint thing like nine times out of ten they're gonna be just as scared as well um and knowing that, that that's just a part of love like that's just a part of the process and to address the question of being afraid of losing yourself in a relationship like that is so valid i have struggled with that in a lot of my relationships but i know what has really helped me and i think can help you as well is making sure like you're grounded in your routines making sure you're grounded in who you are like 
when you get into a relationship with someone, you're not merging with them in a sense. Y'all are creating something new together. You're still you, they're still them, but y'all are creating a y'all together. Um, it should never be, it's you, you're, you've you merged with them and now y'all are, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it shouldn't, I don't know, I just, I don't agree with this whole idea of merging with someone. I feel like the best relationships involves keeping the individual alive because then that's how y'all consistently feed the relationship if y'all just merge together then like you're just that thing you know what i'm saying y'all are just the relationship but it's like no y'all are so much more than that i guess to like ground this answer that i'm giving um just making sure you have hobbies that you're gonna do regardless like for me i have my youtube channel like no matter who i'm talking to they know I have to go and record like I can't see you right now I can't talk to you right now because I need to do my channel like this brings me joy this fulfills me so having things that fulfill you and that you have regardless staying loyal to yourself and staying loyal to the things that you got going on regardless of who comes in and out of your life um I feel like you'll never lose yourself the last like literally the last person I dated I implemented that practice or that ideology and I didn't lose myself for the first fucking time so it definitely works bro like just staying loyal to yourself first no matter what um but yeah like trust yourself have faith in yourself that like you can fall in love and still take care of you and still you know what I'm saying not be distracted you know what I'm saying even if you are distracted sometimes like it's a beautiful distraction a beautiful distraction because it fills you with creativity with motivation to do even better in the things that you are staying loyal to but yeah good luck you got this but yeah y'all as much as I want to keep yapping I know I gotta wrap it up um I'm just feeling so grateful like I feel like for most of my life, I was looking at love through the lens of the different extremes, but I've just finally come to a place where I'm just like actually experiencing it. I feel just so held in love and seen, and I just wish that for everybody, and I really wish I could go back in the past and hug my 20-year-old self, my 16-year-old self, my 13-year-old self, my fucking six-year-old self, and just be like, bruh the love and the intimacy and that seen feeling that you are like craving and looking for exists like you are not asking for too much like your no is valid like all that like <sighs> yeah y'all I almost made it to the end of the video I'll cry I mean, I'm tearing up does that count <laughs> does that count <laughs> But yeah, I feel like the painting actually came out so freaking cute. Let me know how y'all feel about it. Like, I low-key, I've always wanted to sell prints. So yeah, let me know if y'all would be interested in that. And definitely let me know how the topic made you feel and if you can relate to anything that I talked about today. As well as if you have any advice for anyone listening. But yeah, stay tuned for the rest of the Ask Shay segment. And we're also going to be having a new podcast episode dropping tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, y'all, I'm really growing on my YouTube journey. And I just appreciate all the support and love that I be getting. Like, I love when y'all DM me and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop yapping. I'm going to stop yapping. I'm going to stop yapping. I'm going to talk to y'all next time. Bye.